Hello listeners, Mark here with another off-season show and it's Hull FC we'll cover this time. Our old friend Sarah Scoots McKenzie pops in to recap 2018 and try to remember when it was good before the losing streak. The local journo Paul Clark then joins us on the phone to hit on some of the off-season storylines before they both give us their early takes on what could happen in 2019. We hope you enjoy. Hello, Sarah. Welcome along to a, a nice time for you just to talk about Hull FC. How are you? I'm all right, thank you. How about you? Uh, yeah, this is uh, it's, it's going well, these off-season shows. So um, I, I'm glad that we've got to, to Hull and we can have a little bit of a catch-up. Uh, before we have a little bit of a catch-up on what you thought of the 2018 season, um, the, the, the shows we've done so far, I was, I was pretty close with my predictions, but with Hull, I predicted they'd finish fourth. Um, I thought they'd get to the cup semi-finals, and I also picked Liam Watts as the key man. And in a weird way, he kind of was. Yeah. <laughs> but maybe not in the way that we expected. The the reality of it was obviously Hull FC finished eighth after the Super Eights at the fa- final reckoning of the season. Uh, came out of the cup in the quarterfinals to end that two-year run. Um, we have had, we've had a, a few other we know there's loads of Hull FC fans that get in touch with the show so we've had a few other people that gave their views on the season um, Jodie Trowell or Trowell said shocking still but still finished in the top 8 AK Steele said started off reasonably mediocre then got progressively worse spent the season from the beginning of the July onwards peeking out from behind the sofa looking to see if it was over yet injuries league structure and the quality squad quality all contributed but it'll be better next season with marky signing matty dawson jones rich langley just said disappointing page said average with a lot of injuries ready for a better 2019 brendan loftus uh, very succinctly uh, said his thoughts on 2018 where it was shit and uh, your dad joshua's granddad said Fair start, beat Dobbins with 12, then fucked up with injuries until total shit finish. Roll on next year. Hey, he's got his language going, didn't he? Your dad there. Yeah, he's not afraid to. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, what? Let, let's have you take us through the, the 2018 season. If you can think right back to round one when Hull FC hammered Huddersfield Giants 38-12 and then we'll go all the way through to the end of the Super 8s and the the, the long losing run. So I, I, I don't know where you want to start with with your season really Sarah so I'll, I'll let you I'll let you tell me. Yeah so um, that first match against Huddersfield was freezing cold um, but there looked to be a few promising signs. Um, you know, it's di- it difficult to sort of make a full judgment on one match, but for us, we felt it was really important that we got off to a winning start with then the um, the farcical trip to Australia coming up next. It wasn't a farce, um, it was a great success, but anyway. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we, so I uh, first sighting of Beretta who um is no Mahe for newer but you know you thought one match maybe maybe we he had prospects um then of course yeah we went off over to Australia um which financially by all accounts was a great success but on the pitch uh Beretta picked up his first concussion I think after about two minutes and then we later discovered that Scott Taylor had been playing with appendicitis. Um, yeah, are you saying that that started to set the scene for the season that was to come in terms of injury woes, Sarah? <laughs> well, I guess we started as we went on, didn't we? Yeah, I mean, in- injuries will be a, a, a big factor in, in the final reckoning, especially, wouldn't it, for Hull FC in 2018? I mean, you, you went through the, the back end of the season with fourth and fifth choice halfbacks, uh, basically, is, is the line that's been tried out. So, um, But in that first two-thirds of the season, there was, there was a few really nice margins of victory but they came against kind of the clubs that were p- playing badly at the time didn't they people like Huddersfield Catalan Widness really but you never got 
you never got completely hammered, did you? There's no real blowout scores in that first sort of two thirds of the season. Let's say go if we went right the way up to when the losing run started in round twenty, you, you kind of won a couple, lost a couple, won a couple, lost a couple. There was there was bright moments, but then there was you know not so bright moments as as yeah, well along we, the way. We what, had a few sort of unlucky results, you know. I mean, when you came to the KCOM the attempted drop goal, which then fell into an offside player's hand, which led to you score. Offside, but yeah, I know what you're saying. <laughs> in front of the kicker. <laughs> um, you know, and we nobody a, touched it. <laughs> we had a few matches like that. Um, yeah, you had narrow defeats at, at away at Leeds. You had narrow defeat away at Catalan, um, and the narrow, and like you say, slightly unfortunate home loss against. Wigan, even though Wigan had a perfectly legitimate try ruled out in the first half, that we've we seen them to have forgot there, Sarah. Um, but <laughs> no idea which one you mean. <laughs> um, but anyway, no, you're right. There were a few tight losses and a few uh, a few a few nice wins. Um, so how did how did you feel at that stage? Say Magic Weekend, okay? You you've just beaten your, your local rivals. We've gone through uh, you know four months of the season at that point. Did you think that you were set up to move forward or do you think injuries were starting to mess with things at that stage already? Um, I think probably you felt that the we had to turn a corner with the injuries. You thought it can't keep going, you know, things are going to pick up, we're going to get these players back and kick on and... Yeah, it wasn't looking bleak. I mean, before the season, I had said I thought we'd finish fifth or sixth. I thought we'd miss out on the top four, but not by loads. Um, And we did keep those top clubs in touching distance for quite a while. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Which of the injuries then do you think was the most significant? I mean, we know there was... um, Bowden was out for, for pretty much the whole season. There was long-term injuries to Kelly to Snade to Connor um there was injuries to god who didn't get injured Alan Alan was out for a little period uh, Jamie Shaw missed quite a few games Josh Griffin Josh Griffin had a, a lot basically after he started the season quite well had two-thirds of the season out injured didn't he so yeah I mean I think I mean for me he was picking up so much form um he was looking really good I mean I would have questioned whether he'd have even even been in with a chance of an England call up if he had continued and then he picked up that nasty injury um it's really hard to pick one player but I think probably the injury to Sneed was probably the the one that hit us hardest he is the controller of course, yeah, and you can kind of put Connor or Kelly or even in the past Tomb of Harvey alongside him and they've been able to have success, haven't they, because of what he allows them to do sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, Connor so. and Kelly are your mavericks who can play alongside Sneed, but p- trying to play Connor and Kelly together does not work at all. Um, so I think that probably was the real killer. Do you think... Any of the injuries were as, as significant as letting Liam Watts go very early on in the season? Um, I mean, obviously, it's it's that was a massive loss to us. I, I mean, I know he was picking up red cards and all the time. Mentions. So, in one sense, you know, he probably. Um, wouldn't have played many more matches for us than he did with being at Cass. Um, but that combined with the facts of the injuries to Bowden, Green, um, Taylor playing with injuries, Pia picking up injuries, um, it just didn't help. You know, it means you straight away you're a prop down from your your first choice. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, so... So there, there was pl- plenty of factors, basically, why the why the forwards weren't able to play, set a platform very regularly, and even when they were, there wasn't probably enough creativity, was there, because of all the no. injuries that we've spoken about. But, you know, you still did 
quite well. Like uh, like Jody sort of picked on, still finished in the top eight, which is successful enough. It meant you were safe from quite early on. Do you think that enough was done too early in a weird way to be wor- worried about any threat of the middle eights? So complacency set in maybe when the chances of silverware fell away? Uh, which amplified their in- injuries. Do you think that led into the season-ending run of 11 successive defeats? I've got no idea, to be honest. Um, or I am pleased we finished in the top eight, because if we hadn't finished in the top eight, I'm not convinced to how many teams we'd have beaten in the middle eights. Um, yeah, form was that low, wasn't it, at that yeah, stage? Yeah, it really was. You know, I mean, even when they, the match that Joshua was the media manager and, you know, we were beating Catalans and then we just threw it away, really. We, we I don't know whether it had become a mental thing that we couldn't win or we couldn't care or what it was, really. So, so I mean, in, in in that run, there was two real hammerings, wasn't there? Away yeah. at Wakefield and away at Warrington. I'm guessing one of those or both will be your low point of the season as a as a Hull FC fan. Yeah, um, probably. Yeah, um, although they're almost at that point where, from so early on, you know, it's going so wrong. <laughs> yeah. That it doesn't hurt in the same way like that the cup loss at St Helens did. Right, I get you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I mean, when they gave you a, when the boys gave you a chance and you thought you might come back and, and yeah. then it was taken away at the end, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, at, at Wakefield, we were standing with um, some friends, um, one of Luke's friends at school. Um, he he's autistic, but he um, loves the rugby, and he he had his little iPad there filming it all, and he just kept saying, "Well, I do hope we see a try at some point," and so you know. Poor Joe didn't get to see a trial match. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I think it just got to the point where it was all just a bit of a, a a joke. You know, you sort of think, well... It got so worse that it wasn't, like, painful. <laughs> got... Yeah, and, and I think it was the... At least we knew it didn't matter. Yeah, of course, yeah. And that, yeah. that, that, that If that had been going into, into a... a a match where it was, you know, are we going to finish top eight or are we not? And you have that sort of a result, then, then that's a completely different story. I, I get, I get what you're saying. Yeah. So, then I suppose then what what was the what was the high points and who stood out for you this year in a, in a Hull FC shirt? <sighs> um, high points. <laughs> 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 to be quite honest, the full-time whistle at Wigan at the end of the season was quite a high point. <laughs> it had just got to the point where it was painful being a Hull fan. So you can't remember back to Magic Weekend and the uh, and the, the the fan dancing in the crowd uh, uh, as you were taking yeah. taking the old enemy down, or and, the away and, win at, on on Easter. Uh, yeah, the the away win at Rovers with twelve men that was quite nice. Yeah, what about any of the players? Obviously, Jake Connor emerged as an England player this year, didn't he? Which was, yeah. it meant that we all started to like him, even though we don't necessarily like all his behaviour when he's playing against us. But he, he became, you know, the, the the snake for us all in that yeah. international series. So would would he be a player of the season or maybe one of the forwards? Um, I think really it has to be Jake. But um, I thought Brad Fash right at the back end started to really step up his game which was nice to see because him and Massey it felt like they'd stagnated a bit um but then just the last few matches I mean Radford said in one of his interviews that you know he'd dropped them basically because you know they weren't performing and I think that they were just exhausted they were playing too many minutes for young kids um but then when they came back they did really step it up so, so at least that gives um, gives you something, some sort of nice light, you know, nice moments to take from from the 2018 season. Even though it sounds like it's been a real, real slog for you watching along, Sarah. Yeah, it, to be honest, yeah. After that. 